Stay up front. Okay. All right. Uh, consideration of the May 7th meeting. Um, actually, I should say this is the regular uh, meeting of the Architectural Board of Review for June 4th, 2019. All right. Now the meeting minutes for May 7th. Any comments? I do have a comment. Um, third page. The paragraph that starts out, Member Russ. It's not always all about me, but it is this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, down near the bottom, it starts out, Member Russ. And um, I think it is the third sentence. It says, I questioned if the intent, actually what I think I would like that to say is I stated that the intent of Article 9B in the code is to maintain an aesthetically pleasing park-like atmosphere. Okay. I wasn't questioning the code. <gasps> we can make that change. And that's all I have. Anybody else? Hearing no more, I would uh, like a motion to approve the minutes of May 7. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Right. Okay. Is there any uh, non-agenda items um, for anybody that's out in the audience that would like to uh, speak now? I, I don't see anybody that's not on the agenda, so I'm assuming we're good to go here. All right. The rest of this is... Um, but the next one is a public hearing to review site plan to expand the parking lot at 101 Waukegan Road. Uh, to update those who you weren't here last uh, last time, the uh, this is the second go around for these folks, and uh, uh, it looks to me like they've taken a lot of the our suggestions, if not all of them, uh, to heart, and uh, for which we appreciate that. But in any event, um, uh, the uh, this is a public hearing, so anybody that's going to testify needs to stand and raise their right hand and repeat after me. And I think I've got this down now. Uh, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. No, I don't say that. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay, you don't have to repeat that. You just say, I do. All right, thank you. Okay, so now it's your show. Good evening, uh, John Carlson from Carlson Landscape Associates. I'm the landscape architect for the project. Uh, we had made changes to the site plan and to the landscape plan uh, following the comments and direction from the board. The, uh, at the very north end, we radius the parking lot, eliminated stalls in that area. And then we did add two additional Peninsula Islands into the parking strip. Uh, the one at the south, the vault structures were moved and interrupted in that segment to work around where the tree island would be. In doing that, the island uh, extended a little farther south from underneath the parking lot. So one of the, the five uh, elm trees shunted south. Uh, we planted additional material along the front of the parked cars, uh, selected some material that we could drop down a little bit farther down the slope. And on the far side of the basin, we introduced trees, conifers, and additional shrub masses wherever possible. We had, uh, I had made switches to more native species or uh, close to native species. In, t in total, we added 16 trees, uh, we've got the six conifers, a number more shrubs, and in extending the, the native seeding to the west to create the undulation, we added about 4,000 square feet to the, to the native seed zone. Uh, okay. You know, incidental changes, you know, there were, you know, the, the, uh, the graphic image is kind of a melding of the old and the new. Some of the perennial clusters that were there are now displaced by the seating, the way the parking lot changed. So basically this is uh, representative to all the additional trees that went in and maybe not as much of the buffer in front of the cars. But the, 
the, the graphic drawing would show that we are pretty much working with a continuous row across the face of the cars. And in, it, it, one thing I did, it might not jump off the plan, but you know, we've got you know, some swamp oak, swamp white oak, and we've got bald cypress. And uh, we did have the Nissa sylvatica in the first plan, but it's all been rearranged. And what I tried to do in that we, we can't get away from a little bit of a linear feel near the parking lot is a lot of the tree varieties hopscotch back and forth across the basin so that it takes a little bit more of a blending of the outside and the inside of the basin towards more of a colony. And I think it, as it grows in, you'll see that while well, we've got oaks on the left, oaks on the right, and you'll kind of see those clusters come together. There are some taglines on the drawing that kind of show where the species are related, but you know, to really follow it, you'd almost have to like color them in with the color code. Uh, but that happens with uh, three or four of the species. The landscape at the face and close to the building is unchanged. So that, that's as presented the first time around. Every, every, all the modifications had to do with the bioswale area from the back of the curb towards Waukegan Road and up at the north. The uh, smoking shelters weren't moved. Uh, you know, I'm here to answer any questions. Okay. Tim? Is that with you? Um, I don't really have any questions. I think it looks great. Thank you. Um, all the species are in line. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with it. So, Neil, I also think it's pretty good. The only the only issue I have with it is with as with all landscape screening is it's really good for six months of the year and not so good for the other six months of the year. But then I'm in Florida most of that time. So, <laughs> other than that, we, I, we I did introduce. The conifers, you know, up on the high ground on the west, uh, but you know that that bioswale basin would be would be tough to confidently introduce evergreens in there. Mm -hmm. Vertical evergreens, we you know we have 156 evergreen plants in the landscape, <laughs> but you know they're not out in the basin. Yeah. Good. Um, I, and I did not have the benefit of being here. Mm -hmm. uh, last time, um, but just with the general overview, um, uh, it, it seems to, you know, at least hit the, the adjustments everyone was concerned about. So um, I would say, you know, I don't have anything additional to add. Uh, one other significant change that we made is all the light stanchions, all the light poles were moved away from the building to the far side of the parking lot. And then in doing that, it kind of initiated, you know, had to be coordinated with how we could do the tree spacing to keep the uh, peninsula trees from, from blocking the light. Uh, I can't zoom in, but the light poles are highlighted. You probably see them on the, on the blueprints where they, they pick up. We just showed some light rays coming off them to where you could see where they were at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, like Ed, I wasn't here last time, so I apologize for that. And I, well, can I, have to assume that the remarks that were made previously have been resolved here. It seems like everybody's pretty happy until we get to Carol. <laughs> but I have, not, you know, I have nothing to add. I think it looks good from, from where I stand here okay. and from what was discussed last time. Carol? Yeah, thrilled to be in the anchor position here. I want to say something I didn't say last time, and that mm. is that Pasquazes looks great, so thank you for doing that. Thank you. And I think we're probably lucky to get you on this project, too, because we did talk about how this whole corridor could really just be a massive line of parking. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're, you're making some tremendous inroads into that appearance well, on you. two different no. sites. And you know, the one that's no. this, come to fruit is will, really beautiful. So you know, whatever, uh, I would say, beauty or inherent character is at Pasquazi is, you know, this will be different. But I think it's going to have, you know, uh, a very intriguing look as you drive by. Yeah, I think it's different in a good way. Uh, Pasquazi certainly specializes in some of the uh, less native species mm -hmm. that we all love so much yeah. because they're so colorful, and mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily survive as well as, as your planting on, on this site might. You know, th this may be much more successful than most of our gardens <laughs> oh, <thank laughs> because you. of the species that you've selected. But I would like to echo what everybody said. There were a lot of things that were talked about because there was so much information on the drive.
mm -hmm. when you came in, saw that you had moved the light poles, which I think Bob commented about. Um, the undulation mm -hmm. was a conversation. Um, bald cypress, I think, came from Tim. Um, the corner openness, mm -hmm. I, you did some work to achieve. You added some islands, and it's really a tremendous number of changes, and um, I think it's looking great. Want to thank you okay. for the efforts that you've made. Um, it's not the first time this building owner has come in and tried to do something with us, and it's always to improve it. You know, appreciate that, that you come in and work towards such a high standard, so thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to echo what everybody said. I think uh, we had a, we had a good discussion last time, and and uh, you, uh, not that we know everything, and we are at least I'm not. Tim is the only landscape guy, but um, you took the, the concerns and and made them a, a good plan. Uh, so I thank you for that. And my my big fear now is. We've still got four or five more properties, and uh, uh, the this one and Pasquazies are going to be a hard act to follow. Uh, Good. And so that that becomes a little more difficult for us in a, in a decision that, in my mind, should never have been made anyway. But that's neither here nor there. So, uh, does somebody like to make a motion? Uh, sure, uh, we're putting this forward to the yeah, we're trustees. Recommending. recommending. Sure, we'll recommend the village board approve the proposed site plan as presented today. Second. Second. Okay, uh, roll call. Uh, Member Russ. Aye. Member Kerouac. Aye. Member Deegan. Aye. Member Dolman. Aye. Member Callahan. Aye. And Chair Hunter. Aye. Okay. Okay, the recommendation passes. Okay. Thank Thanks you very again, much. Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Thanks for all your hard work. Thank you. Thanks very much. Sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thanks for coming in. Okay, next uh, consideration of sign permit application for Tacos El Norte at 303 South Waukegan Road. Thanks. So, this is not a public hearing, right? Right. Yeah. Well, your turn. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Jay Cash from Sinorama in Liberty Villa. Back once again for Tacos El Norte. You were kind enough to approve their front sign many months ago. And at your recommendation from that meeting, they also wanted to add the sign on the back, similar to what Panera has on that location. Okay, for anybody that doesn't remember, um, I think who had the sign? Who else had the sign back there? Was it Noodles? Somebody else had. That's either Noodle Bar or the, it might have been Wamu that first did it, though. Is that right? I don't, I don't know. Way back in the past, Glockies had a sign on. The last two tenants have had the uh, east hey, side Diego. as for their second sign. Folks, I'm Diego, sorry. the owner of El Norte. Ah, good time. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, any comments, Carol? Um, no, what you already started to say that we have had a sign in that place. It's kind of a good thing that everybody in this group left because we had a lot of talk with them about the landscaping. And I think it was maybe Noodle Bar that complained that we have too much landscaping on this corner. <laughs> <laughs> I've never <laughs> heard you say that before. <laughs> uh, I'm just quoting them. But uh, we actually, I think, had a complaint because on that corner there isn't signage on the corner and the lot is depressed and yeah. right. you know, there's landscaping on the perimeter of the carriageway shopping area and those two businesses. Yeah, get, don't benefit from the landscape, but you know, regardless in the winter months we will and hopefully, you know, I mean, we get, uh, when you're heading uh, west on 176, it's still visible. And I believe our sign is, in my opinion, our, the location of where our sign would be is a little more um, favorable 
than the Paneras, with like with the trees, <laughs> the tree line. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to come in and move it. <laughs> right, you can't play favorites here. No, I, but, just, um, I was just, you know. I was, I was, sorry, it's more visible, right. you're right. Yeah, and so I think we're being told you're, you're going to try and match the size and the location of what was there before. Correct. So, I, you know, I'm fine with it. Matt? Yeah, I have no further com yeah, no comments. I think it looks fine. Same. Neil? Neil. I'm Come very on. comfortable with it. The only uh, okay, issue good. I have is you <laughs> talk about uh, in, the, in the picture that you have that shows Panera Bread, uh, where you see everything, all the equipment and everything down below that we talked at one point about how all four sides of a building should be, should be considered. This is an example of one that we didn't. And mm -hmm. uh, that's the building. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. As far as the sign's concerned, I'm, yeah. I think it, it's a good addition. I think it'll work. I hope it'll work well for you. Thanks. Yeah. Same with me. Tim? Okay. Yeah. Boy, this is. Yeah. We're moving. <laughs> Okay, uh, I need to have a motion then. This is a, a recommendation, recommendation because it's a sign exemption. Yeah. yeah. Um, I move to recommend the Village Board grant uh, the exemption from the Sanko regulations for the signage as presented. Second. Okay. Or can we, um, yeah, that's it. All good. What do you want to do? Nothing. Good. <laughs> Don't want to do anything. Roll call. Okay, uh, Member Callahan. Aye. Member Dahlman. Aye. Member Deegan. Aye. Member Kerouac. Aye. Member Russ. Aye. And Chair Hunter. Aye. Okay. So the motion passes to make a recommendation to the Village Board that the sign exemptions okay. be approved. So I can schedule that for a Village Board meeting later in June. Thank you, everybody. And Mike, as always, thank you for your help. Sure. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Yep. Good timing. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Mike. No. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't even <laughs> notice that. <laughs> That's funny. He had a dog in his backpack. Did he really? Uh -huh. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I totally missed that. Yeah. What? <laughs> Little black poodle. Really? It's the best cutest yeah. thing ever. Well, if we didn't know. approve the sign, the dog probably would have turned vicious and attacked us. <laughs> <laughs> he would have turned it loose. That was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Well, we so this item Michael. we have the, um, the site planner review amendments. Uh, we talked about this last time. Um, we put the first three sections in a different order at the recommendation of the, our discussion last time. So exempt activities are first, then regulated activities, and then the purpose of it. And then the, the other item we, um, you know, that got some discussion last time is the, um, you know, how we would word the um, section on minor adjustments by the building commissioner on the, uh, on the third page there. And so, um, you know, we, we took out some of the wording that um, was, was kind of awkward about trying to describe what a minor thing is, um, the percentage of the facade and some of those numbers. And um, basically we defined minor as, uh, you know, an adjustment that will not significantly alter the appearance of the previously approved design or the appearance of the currently existing site or building and the adjustment is consistent with the purpose of this section. And then we put, you know, four potential examples of things that are minor. Although in the first example, the word not is missing in your text. We'll add that there. And that's about it. So your thoughts. There were One a few question things. I have regarding the whole thing is, is the two issues that we saw tonight um, it seems to me that the one for Tacos El Norte could have been just an administrative approval and not even have to come here, let alone go to the village board. That was exactly my question to Mike when it came well, up. Well, and the other one, the, the, uh, the site plan for the parking lot, it seems to me that the final approval for that could be right here and that they shouldn't have to go to the village board for that. I right. don't know that we have an option on that. Well, let's see. Um, on the current, under the current code, we don't. But let's see how. Um, I think I think Neil's right that. Well, 
if the only thing, this um, 101 Waukegan, because they need a variance for that little bit along carriage way where they're 10 feet instead of 15 feet, it becomes something that will go to the village board for something else, you know, for the variance. That, so, that so, makes sense, yeah. So then the, the site plan approval, they would give both approvals at the same time under this code. But I think um, if they did not need that, that under this code we might be able to do final approval here. Because things that don't need a village board approval, generally we're given the authority to do final approvals here under this text, under this change. Has the village board ever denied things that we've approved? Uh, I, don't, I can't think of any. They've approved things that we've denied. Right. Yeah, but that's their... But that wasn't your question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't do anything about that. No, they haven't. Then I can think of Is that Okay, I was just curious. Say how we run uh, in parallel with them or not. The zoning board, on the other hand, is uh, on their own yeah. page. And there's very little coordination between zoning and ABR, which just yeah, that seems as odd as anything. Yeah. Uh, no, I think this is this is basically what we talked about. When I first read it, I thought, wait a minute, we got the purpose down at the end instead of in the beginning. Um, but I guess we decided to do it that way. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I think got, there were. I've got a number of things. Some are minor, and, and uh, but on on um, the page that, that starts off design review procedures, I could live with it this way. But I wondered if A shouldn't be C and C shouldn't be A. Oh. Um. Well, that's the way we had it last time, and uh, the, the discussion last time was Is it, that... That's one I can live with either way. Yeah, it was yeah. to put exempt first and put uh, purpose last. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was just talking about. Yeah. 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 Is that the way it's usually done? I mean, no. we have... No, usually it's the exempts are buried, which is frustrating. Right. For us lazy people who just read something, yeah. like, okay, I got to do this, and I don't read the whole quiz first. Right. Yeah. When I look at... Do you I agree, Ed, when you read I'm, I'm with you. Oh, yeah. All the, man, I have zero bandwidth for <laughs> yeah. purpose. <laughs> yeah. Just give me to the meat right now. Yes. Yeah. 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 Or what I don't need to worry about and yeah. let me move on to other yeah. worries. Yeah. When I'm looking at item B, it, it says design review should be required before any person may. And I question the use, use of the words any person may. Uh, what if somebody comes in, they're a corporation? How about entity? Yeah, we, uh, we can right, we could say person or corporation, uh, or, possibly. Or maybe um, um, or figure out some way to delete right. that part of it all together and make it work. Right. On number one, the part in the parentheses starts off such as without limitation. It seems like the word building should be in there. The whole idea is that it does say up above the exterior appearance of a building. But it seems like it should say any building, wall, fence, or something like that. It's another minor thing. And is that under under which paragraph? Yeah, B1. B1. Oh, okay, sure. I think what they're doing is they're saying within the building the component, you know, like other parts of it, right? Yeah. Right. Number and number three, the last sentence talks about the changing of light bulbs, and I'm not sure that should even be in there. Well, I mean, there's all too kinds fast. of. And this does go way back when um, uh, I can't remember who it was now. It doesn't really matter, but it, early on in the industrial park, when everybody was using or they started mm -hmm. to use low sodium uh, vapor lights. And this was when our village attorney was a guy named Peter, the crusty old guy. Nordigan. Yeah, Peter, yeah. Peter, Peter Nordigan. Nordigan. Yeah. You know, he was always at the meeting sitting out there. And uh, yeah, somebody came in and they had, a, they had a slew of parking lot lights and they were all, uh, I mean, there must have been 30 of them. It was one of the bigger projects out there. And uh, they were all low pressure sodium. And I said, that's not allowed here. 
And uh, he said, well, I didn't see it anywhere. I said, Peter, that's not allowed here, is this, isn't it in our, our code? And he said, it is now. And, <laughs> <laughs> and they changed it. <laughs> so <laughs> things were fast and loose then. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, that's the only time that I can think of that that was, that was a possible thing. It was just. Uh, well, the subject of this one is substantial changes, and what that sentence says is, Changing the light bulbs is not a substantial could be. change. Well, yeah. it, but it does say the, the first sentence says if you change the intensity or the color temperature or the distribution pattern or shielding of the light, then it is a substantial change. Yeah. And so then the then second then, sentence says if you're only changing the bulb, but, it's not. Yeah, okay. I can live with it either way. I, I, I agree with you. I could live with it either way. We could take the second sentence out and just it sounds leave kind it of as silly, first but it's well, possible to change it, change the ballast, and change the whole appearance. Right. And, and yeah, but yeah. someone may say, "Oh, like changing just a burnt out changing to." Right. You would almost want to say change the light bulb specification or type or something. Right. To clarify, if we keep that sentence in, yeah, maybe we say light bulb. So this, this was intended just to be crystal clear that the yeah. regular maintenance of switching your burned out bulb for the same one yeah. is not for design review and maybe that almost does not need to be said. Yeah, I would maybe it's almost better that. left unsaid. Yeah. Right? I would think that's... Yeah. In the next sentence, number four, it says removal of any street furniture. What about at the beginning of that if you put add or remove? We could do that. And in number five, the first phrase there, I'm not, I'm wondering whether it could be deleted. It says, with respect to any site or use for which design approval has been granted. It seems to me if you just take that out of there, the rest of it stands fine by itself. Yeah, we, we could do that. Can you tell I deal a lot with specifications? <laughs> right. <laughs> On the next page, I have an example under D4. I wonder if, if it would make sense to emphasize the word preliminary drawings because the, the uh, presentation they, they made us tonight to, to us tonight with all these working drawings, it seems like if we came up with some major changes to it, they would have wasted a lot of time doing working drawings and they'd be redoing. The whole idea was that we'd get preliminary drawings. That's I in just, our, that's somewhere. Yeah, it, is that, somewhere. it used to be that that's what we got. Right. Yeah. And yeah. way back when I said, this is not right, guys. You know, that was a couple of village managers ago. Because I was just wondering if we should just underline the word preliminary. Unless we want to pay for the redo, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't see a lot of sections. I mean, maybe site sections, but we don't have, like, building sections. I don't know if we need to clarify what kind of sections we want. Like, right, I don't recall seeing a lot of sections. Well, most right. of the stuff doesn't really mm -hmm. add anything to it. Yeah. Maybe sections through the site. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if we even. I mean, I think that's all more of a zoning right. requirement than us. I don't know what's. I just haven't seen any. I don't know why we would need to see a section. I can't either. We could cross that out. Well, you know, sometimes people do not want to do a rendering and provide a section instead. It's. Yeah, but I. I if I was reading this, I'm like, I got to provide a section, of, but I don't know. But, you know, I, I, it just seems like, I guess the only section that makes sense is like if you're looking at a, you know, when they show like the location of a sign in section, maybe we get those. But maybe it's, I just think maybe we need to clarify sections. If I, I'm just reading this, if I'm reading these requirements. Yeah, I don't know that we need any sections. Yeah, I don't right. think people, I just think the sections aren't necessary. We, we could just take it out. It yeah. means it would be a rare thing where we would actually need or want one. Some complicated building shape, possibly, but we could just take well, it out. Well, Foster was coming out here with one of his things. We might ask for it. Yeah. We wouldn't understand it. 
In the paragraph at the bottom, the uh, second line from the bottom says, any reviewing body, what is meant by that? Does that mean us? Or does it mean planning and zoning or village board? It, it, right, it means uh, all those. Us, us, PCZBA, village board, any, any of those bodies could request additional materials. So the village board, you know, when they're approving the final um, site plan, when we're making a recommendation to them, if they want to see something else, they could say, we really want to see a section through this and yeah. ask for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Are you done, Ed? Neil? I'm sorry, not Ed. I, and I, I just have a couple of things. Not about content, Okay. but about uh, just yeah, consi consistent. Oh, he, he's still going. Too bad. Yeah. Uh, you, you paused too long. Get done that quick. On the next page, item, item Roman numeral two. I wonder if 400 square feet couldn't be significantly larger than that, like maybe 2,000 square feet before it has to go to the village board. Yeah, it possibly could. If everyone else agrees, we could uh, change it to 2,000 in the draft. Okay. Well, it's enormous. Yeah, we go from 400 to 2,000. This is, this is de deciding what has to go to village board rather than final approval here. So uh, let me go back to a couple of years when my back neighbor built a 400 square foot garage uh -huh, and yeah. we went through the whole process yeah. we were, you know, I had to come in and say it was too tall or not tall enough or whatever and support them and it kind of went just like this is a garage <laughs> right. it's behind my house and I'm fine <laughs> and yeah. It, yeah there was a lot of discussion about that yeah. for no, no reason at all uh, the ABR didn't look at it Right. Um, anyway. Right. Uh, yeah, we're not talking about a, a private accessory building, though, on a residential lot in this case. You know, we're, we're talking true. about things are all, all in the public view. So, um, I mean, well, then, yeah, I, I figure I, okay, we could do it. I take that back because I, I forget that we're not talking residential stuff. Yeah. I um, mean, I, I trust us to do a lot of stuff, but I think the trustees need to see things that are of a public nature. And sometimes they do need the prerogative of making a political decision where we make the right aesthetic decision. <laughs> Thanks for smiling at that joke, Tim. <laughs> no problem. Because you could do a 10 by 40 on something and that would be great. You know, that's a good opportunity to ruin something. It, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> that's the or way I look at that. Or make something really cool. Yeah, or do something amazing, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jawa tries hard to do the right thing, but you know, when they came in under their own initiative to do something about the sound problem, you know, they yeah. tapped a sheet metal box on the outside right. of a very handsome building. Yeah. Now, if that were in a place that were highly visible or, mm. you know, were, well, if it were in a different location period, it would be an issue. Yep. So I, I think the question is here, 400 or 2,000, I'd be inclined to stick with the 400. I would I, too, if, if I take yeah. my other argument out of the equation, which wasn't an argument at all. And if village trustees don't want to rubber stamp the decision or the ABR, they don't have to. I'd rather, on that one, just, it's not like we see a lot of that, but right. be more cautious on the square footage than lenient. Okay. I agree. I'm trying to think of when uh, Val Lanza built his little building. That's probably not even 400 square feet mm -hmm. well, as far as the footprint. Yeah. So. But it's way bigger now than it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> it was enlarged by what? About 16 or 17 percent? At least, yeah. yeah. I thought you were referring to the uh, plant walls that were put in a few days ago. Well, you know, oh, I haven't seen them. They're in? <laughs> they're yeah, in. They're yeah, they're, they're in. They put them in over the weekend. Cool. Yeah. yeah. The little tilted boxes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I'll go look. Yeah. Okay, Looks just like a few a more items. Okay. What else? 
Just a few more. I'm down in the middle of the page. There's Roman numeral one and two, and the next sentence <coughs> below that says examples of items. If you delete that second line where it says may in some instances include the following, and just insert the word are, A-R-E, examples are, it sounds like a lawyer wrote that and was trying to be uh, Where are you? ultra wordy. Four. Yeah. It says examples are, of items right. that the building commissioner might consider as minor adjustment are. I, I guess the only thing about that is if, if staff, the existing wording does give staff the opportunity to send it to the ABR. It makes clear that they could send it to the ABR if they think there could be a, potentially an issue with it. So if someone changes the location of their benches and we say, eh, we're not too sure about that, maybe we should have the ABR look at it, it's, it's clear that, you know, that we could, that that doesn't apply to every instance, that we could, at our discretion, send it to the ABR if we think it's necessary. Okay, if you want that. That's, that's what, the, what if we, yeah. what if we okay. keep May and take out in some, because I think May in and in some instances are redundant. Help. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. We could take out in some instances, yep. I guess the next sentence there, number one, is that the item that you need the word not? It is, yes. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay, where's this going to go and who has to prove to get this in? Um, well, so we Can I could do comments first? Yeah, sure. And mine are just uh, oh, okay. punctuation. Are you done, Neil? Are you no, done? I still got the last page. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. In the That's so right. one, two, third paragraph down starts off, if the building commissioner does, and in the second line it says, shall. Well, what if the, it's possible that the people may uh, withdraw the, the uh, proposal. So it almost seems like that should say shall, if not withdrawn. Where are you? Uh, yeah, last so page. Are. Last page, it says B, then the next paragraph, then the next paragraph. In the second line, it says request shall. Right, I, I understand your point. I'm not, I'm not sure whether it really needs to be said or if it's just understood that an applicant could always withdraw their application. I mean, we could say it if you want. Just the word shall is pretty right. strong. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, two more items, the item F, the wording on that just, it sounds offensive to me. It just seems like there's a nicer way to say the same thing. And I don't know what that way is. What's the <coughs> offensive part? The shall be unlawful? To fail to perform the following maintenance activities for the benefit of landscape improvements made in accordance with the design approval. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we could reward it yeah. to say you have to maintain your, the idea is you have to maintain your approved landscape. Yeah. We, could, we could reward it. Do we have anything about maintaining your building? Well, the, generally the property maintenance code, yeah, pretty okay. covers that pretty well, I think. Wouldn't this fall under that instead of the ABR? Well, I, you know, the property maintenance code doesn't really cover landscape as well because, you know, you could let a tree die and then just cut it down and, you know, that's not a property maintenance code violation, but that's not the design that was approved, you know, by the ABR. So I mean, I, I this doesn't mean that we are going to be looking at maintenance of stuff. No, no, it doesn't. It mean, just means that somebody is responsible to take care of their property. Right. So that's my next question. On this if is, they don't, I don't have anything it? to do with it. it that would be yeah, staff. Who enforces all this? Not us. Yes. Yeah, that, yeah, would, not that us. would be staff no. that would okay. yeah. enforce that. <laughs> How do you decide what timely means? Like in, in number two, under F, number two, timely and regular removal. There's a couple of dead trees around town. Yeah. <laughs> Six back, months. Yeah. Our whole neighborhood is. Yeah. Dead. Um, you know, I, I don't that, decide. I mean, that would be up to whoever's. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it'd be up to staff. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm done. Okay. 
Okay, we're, we're, so uh, only thing. we're out of time. I'm sorry. I got two minutes. <laughs> Mine is just a consistency of, um, so like after each one, we have a colon, and then sometimes we use a period, sometimes we use a semicolon, sometimes they're in a mix. I think just think we need to be consistent. Okay. That, those things, they bother me. I don't know if they bother anybody else. Like on B, you know, one and two have semicolons, three is a period, you know, just stuff like that. Okay. That's yep. a very minor, yep. super Good minor. Touch. Some right. Then like on C8, it ends with a semicolon and not a period. Yep. And okay. then, um, you know, then D are periods and not semicolons. Okay. Yep. Then Good like point. four, two, one has nothing. Just stuff like that. Right? Okay. I don't yep. need to go through them all, but sure. Just That's a consistency fine. in that. Just. Right. Makes me feel good. Okay. Thank you. So, to an, well, to answer Bob's question, we're looking for this body to make a recommendation. Because this is part of the zoning ordinance, the PCZBA has to hold a public hearing on it mm -hmm. and then make their recommendation to the village board. The village Before board they make a the recommendation board. to the village board, it's got to come back to us. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Or I'm done. Yeah. Really, I'm not kidding. Okay. <laughs> Okay. We can put that in the motion if someone wants to make a motion to make a recommendation. Yeah. Put that in Somebody make that motion. motion. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a couple comments. Oh, Second, we need a motion. Was here. that Ed or Neil? That, that was Neil. That? Neil. Yeah. Neil, okay. Carol had some comments. Sorry, yeah. before we no, got we can discuss on. after a second, so. <laughs> huh? Yeah, so we can discuss after a second. I had a couple comments. Um, you know, that 400 square feet thing or more, it says um, mm -hmm. enlargement of an existing building. It's, I think it should probably say enlargement or modification of an existing building. You know, it's not just an addition that we're referring to there. That would be. Well, you know, if modification of existing building, well, so say you're, you know, replacing your windows and the new windows are you know a slightly different tint you know that is 58 percent light transmittance where the old one was 60 percent light transmittance but the total area of the windows is more than 400 square feet you know it, it kind of I, I guess it brings up a different question if we're applying the square footage to modification right how that would be applied than just an addition Well, do we do we have anything that pertains to that, like change of building elements? Well, we do. Um, I, I mean, we do. I guess you know, number four, the minor adjustments. I mean, we can yeah. consider whether it falls into minor adjustments or not. We could make. Yeah. I mean, we're talking how many angels will fit on the needle now. Yeah. I mean, the intent of the, of the thing is what's important. Right. Not that we cover every contingency yeah. because we okay. can't. Right, be right, a thousand yeah. pages. right. Yeah. Um, so just saying that that one, you know, the 400 square feet, it's clear how that applies to an addition. But when you talk yeah. about <coughs> making modifications, then it did. That's in the adjustment part, probably. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. Right. Right. As long as that's yeah. covered, Carol's right. It needs to be okay. covered somehow. Yeah. yeah, okay. I think that's right. It's in the minor adjustments. Okay. And also under the minor adjustments, I thought we did a, a language adjustment. To there. Um, right now it says the building commissioner may approve minor adjustments to a design approval. I think we wanted it to say the building commissioner may approve minor adjustments to an approved design. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think we did that last time and I, I think it's it oh, okay. adds some clarity. Whoever came up with that, it wasn't me. Okay. Um, there was one that got deleted. Um, And I have to go back to the old page for that. Um, and that was sort of in the same neighborhood where regulated activities, design review shall be required before any entity may commence any new or additional use or continue any use after a building or parcel has been vacant or unused for 12 consecutive months or more. We deleted that. Right. Oh, I just didn't remember the discussion. So, so I must have been thinking about something else at the time. Okay. 
um, and on landscape maintenance. Uh, again, maybe I'm remembering a conversation that really didn't have consensus, but I, I thought we had another point there that uh, address substituting plannings that don't comply with what was originally approved? Um, Which is also under those minor adjustments category, I think, but right. substitute plantings. Right. Well, that is under under minor adjustments, right? So, so you feel it's covered, but this would be specifically about the landscape business, you know, where you substitute different species, which can be important. You know, if you're not following your own landscape plan, that can be important. Right. It's number four. Yeah. Right. And I thought we added that in last time. You want to put it there twice? Well, this is specifically relative to landscape issues, which we said we wanted to strengthen. So, you know, most no, of this clearly is. refers to buildings. So I'm talking about landscape maintenance and the substitution of. But it's under minor adjustments. Were. Yeah, it's under um, four, four, the last. Right, well, three and four both. Three is replacement of plant material on an existing site with material consistent with the original design intent. And then four is substitution on an approved plan. Yeah. So, okay. The horse so it doesn't really belong there. there. Okay. It's in there, yeah. I think that's great then. It doesn't really belong there. Okay. And then can I, again, just for my stupid hang-ups, so it seems like there's an inconsistency, like we go 4-1, right, 4-2, and then I'm not sure how we jump down. Like if we're referencing, like how does Is a, that the proper outlining? For yeah, because the, the, then like the A, two then and, it jumps to an A, like here, right. which doesn't really reference anything back up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we'll, we'll double check that. I don't know what to do to correct it. I just, it just seems right. wrong. We'll, we'll double check for proper outlining. Okay, great. Thank you. All architects that read this stuff are really good spellers. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> it takes me 20 hours to write a page. So I'm not saying I can do, but I just know that's wrong. I just don't yeah, know how to right, fix it. Right. At least the capitals, are, if I'm printing something, it jumps from small case to what? There you go. Putting my name. What else? Did we decide about light bulbs? About what, what I, light I, bulbs? I think we decided yeah. the light bulbs. Yeah. We decided to cross that no, last sentence. Just that off, whole right? sentence okay. comes out. That's good. Some of the some of the comments for the SEC sustainability plan that came from open lands were about uh, lighting in general, you know, ecstatic that something is being done about lighting, but also specifically about uh, the changing of bulbs, the LEDs and the street lamps. And uh, also as an ancillary comment on that, you know, the street lights that appear in the middle of the blocks, which, you know, maybe were just there because someone in the middle of the block asked for it. And, you know, in those days you did what people asked for, but, you know, a suggestion that, uh, the illumination is very important um, and that I believe the village made an agreement with ComEd 10 years ago or something when they relamped, mm -hmm. you know, including the relamping, but you know, to be more mindful of that, to have more control over what ComEd does in the community because it's of significant interest to us. So I just wanted to bring that up relative to the light bulb, the changing of lamping that I think you said, I just wanted to reinforce that again. That's a huge issue. Mm -hmm. Um, I think at CLC, I was told by one of the operations people that when they changed out their bulbs and installed LED, they were all up in arms because the wrong bulbs had been installed and then they realized, oh, but they're great. What we specified would have been way too bright. 
because <laughs> and it went in by accident. They had actually already asked the vendor to uh, replace them, put in the proper bulbs as specified, and then they decided that well, that would be dumb. We don't want it brighter. Yeah. It's really pretty good the way it is, but it was a surprise. Hmm. So to be mindful of it is very important. Changing of a light bulb is pretty important. I don't know that when Commonwealth came through town and got rid of the orange ones and the white ones and the yellow ones, that anybody knew they were coming. I think they just came and did it. Hmm. I think they told us. You mean just a couple of years ago when they did yeah. the residential lights? Yeah. I, I think they told us I know. they were coming for that. I'd been on that horse for a long time. I, Chris, yeah. Chris Lettinger was, I mean, she hated it, where there was an orange one and an orange one, and then you'd look down the street and they'd, you know, Oh, see yeah, it. right. And right. nobody would ever do anything about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That it's whatever Commonwealth wants to do. Yep. Okay, so I, I have a motion. Somebody, I mean, this, that we. We did mistake. have a motion. Yep. Huh? Yep. And we a have second. a motion and a second. Yep. Should I do a roll call vote? Was it a second? It was. Second. Carol seconded it, right? Yes, I seconded yeah. it so we could continue discussing, which is oh, right. okay. <laughs> when you can discuss a motion. So that worked out just fine. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Member Callahan. Aye. Member Dahlman. Aye. Member Deegan. Aye. Member Carraway. Aye. Member Russ. Aye. And Chairman Hunter. Aye. Okay. Great. Recommendation passes. Um, one thing I want to mention under the, uh, what is our item, staff, uh, staff report, um, is that for the, um, per the AVR's suggestion, we have hired a consultant to work with us on the uh, sign code for the industrial park from our discussion uh, a couple meetings back um, there. We uh, got proposals from uh, three different uh, planning uh, firms and uh, decided to go with uh, Camiros and uh, Arista Strungies is the name of their principal planner these days. And uh, we just did a, uh, a tour of the industrial park with her and Drew and uh, other staff today. And uh, if we're expecting to have good attendance at the July meeting, we could uh, have her here at the July meeting. If the first meeting would be to hear your comments and then she'd come back with her uh, recommendations based on that. Who's the, it's the second? So yeah, the July meeting is, is Tuesday, July 2nd. So Thursday is the fourth that week because people aren't uh, going out of town for the whole week because of the holidays or anything. People are gonna be, here, be here for here. Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they should be here. Hey, you gotta be in like Bluff for July 4th. Right, a, yeah. Written by law. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Then, so we'll keep that meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll have her here for the fourth. So the second, what was I her? Mean, I mean, if I remember right, it was the wine people that started that. Right. There, which was full on window sign, and we said if if the intent was to make the the corporate part less corporate and more lively for other adventures, you know, we got to uh, loosen that those restrictions up. Right, so. right. Places like Yuppie Puppy shouldn't be illegal with their signage, you know, the, with the sign for every tenant. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or the, yeah, yeah I, I still think the canoe sign is the best one out there. The right, kind yeah, of sign. right. So what was the general consensus of what, what you saw out there? Everything was very corporate. Well, I, I think what we saw is that there's, you know, there's some existing businesses that are, you know, very industrial that are manufacturing or warehouse or, you know, have one big tenant for the building where our existing sign code works fine because they only need one sign for the building. There's other places that have a lot of, you know, retail or service tenants where they're accessing their individual unit from their own individual entrance. And it would really works best for them to have um, signage for each tenant. And some places have that and some don't. So like Carriageway, Target Outlots, and the Uppy Puppy Building, I would say, are the three that really have signage for each tenant. And in some cases, two signs for each tenant in the case of, you know, Target Outlot and some of the Carriageway people, even a couple of the Uppy Puppy Building people have a, another sign on the, around the corner. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that seems to be working fine, but then you have the wine brokers are in a very similar building where you also have some service people like Vlad's Gym and, and all that, and, and they don't have their own individual signs. 
So, um, you know, come on up with something, whether, whether they come in for tenant sign criteria for the building or, or something comes, coming up with something that would, uh, you know, make those legal like target out lots has become legal through the tenant sign criteria approved as part of the development, but carriageway probably should have had that and never did. So that's something to think about. And then we've got, uh, you know, other buildings like, um, uh, like Forest Pediatrics and, um, and Westmoreland OBGYN where they don't, you know, they don't have their own separate entrance, but we've still allowed separate individual tenant signs on the building. So that's a question whether we want to have a category like that allowed, but then there's clearly the other, the other type of building where you don't need signs for each tenant, you know, or whether there's only one occupant for the building. In which you only need one sign. Yeah, those are such big yeah. buildings that maybe at some point in time they'll decide that it's time to maybe divvy those up. But I'm, I'm trying to remember walking down, you know, some of these in, in ancient times, you know, if you were a, if you were a, uh, a cobbler, there was a, there, that's what you saw. There was a sign, it didn't say anything because they didn't know how to spell cobbler, but there was a guy with his. Right, like Smedbuff. <laughs> oh, you know, yes, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, what's wrong with doing that? You know, graphic representations of what's there. You know, right, you have yeah. a bunch of little kids on the building. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not sure if Westmoreland OBGYN would work with that, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they wanted to do it. Some of the other tenants. Yeah. Perhaps. <laughs> Go over and read. Uh, What's, uh, what's his name? Venturi's was it? Living in Las Vegas. Living from Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Right. The learning from learning Las from Vegas, right. Living for, living for Las Vegas is a different book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay, well, that'll be interesting to see what they come up with. Yeah. But the idea is not to be so. Yeah. I mean, I think that was the idea of, of let's loosen this whole thing up a little bit. Right, yeah. right. And be nice if we could find a way that there weren't umpteen different districts with umpteen different sign codes that there were some consistency across types of districts so maybe we can find that with the industrial park and solve the knot of how to work with a warehouse tenant and a retail tenant and one sign code we can probably do that in some of the other districts in town too mm -hmm. what's the other sign district just here Central well, yeah. right. Auto Park is different, yeah. or you know, the, cent the, the historic area is completely different from Carriageway. Um, I don't know how we do or don't meld those together, but um, I, I think that's part of the difficulties with signs, and the reason they take so much time is is that if you're a sign manufacturer and you work in 17 different towns that each have six or seven different sign codes, you, you just maybe don't even want to bother to read them. You maybe just want to, you know. Do a boilerplate presentation. You know, th throw your your client's name well, how many onto times a have we seen that? standard sign, <laughs> and you know, run it up the flagpole and see what happens. So you know, it's it's not a particularly. Hmm. Well, I guess the result can be okay if we talk about it and talk about it and well, talk about it and talk about it. But we're trying to not spend a lot of time it's on science. It's interesting signs. because we got the cart before the horse. Yeah. We got one example of somebody that came in and wanted to do something that mm -hmm. represented what they do. So I'm not sure how you how far ahead of the horse you can get. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, for something like El Norte, though they're a new tenant with a new sign, I'm not sure how you could not not review that. I don't know how you could, you know, we don't have an approved sign band there. That that's an easy choice on the multi-tenant buildings, and we also don't have a lot of discernible language about how a multi-tenant building should be handled. So why would you know that if you're, you're the owner of a warehouse in the industrial park and you think woohoo I now I can get six retail tenants in here great you know because I've, I've had empty space but and you, got six you know doors. It, it, they're they're wagging the dog on that too they're not thinking about what kind of signage their tenants need or how they can help their signage or how they can help themselves with their marketing uh, you know they don't have guidance from us about how a multi-tenant building might be marketed visually with signage on the street usually because it's not allowed yeah, but it could be. Right. And that's why we're here, right? With this and that's what happened. Out. That's why we have stuff like the, the Westmoreland group now, you know, having a big tenant sign on a building that, you know, no yeah. longer has a building identity. It just has all the tenant identities and the size of the building signage. So, yeah. you know, I mean, that's kind of like a loophole. That's, mm -hmm. you know, 
we wagged the dog on that one too. You know, we got we got backed into doing an approval without having the landlord come in and talk about what the signage plan for the building was. Mm -hmm. Tenants, and we talked about this. Tenants coming in alone and saying, "This is what I need." My landlord said I can do it, so here it is. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've got a you know here's my, here's my sign manufacturer. It's you know it's all done. Everything's been approved. You know, they tell us. Not so fast. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you back them up? You know, particularly if they've been promised it by the landlord. They thought. You know, we heard that clear as a bell, but the landlords don't have guidance on how to proceed like this, and that's how, you know, that's how that horse escaped the barn. You know, we, we, we didn't have the door on. That was a terrible, terrible way to express that. I couldn't, couldn't finish that. <laughs> hmm. But it'd be great if, you know, someone can figure out how to do all those different kinds of tenants in the office park. Maybe we can bring that simplicity into the other districts. Okay, let's see what they come up with. Yep. We have some ideas. Yep, so the first meeting in July will be to listen to your thoughts mostly, and then uh, she'll present a few observations, but mostly to listen to your thoughts, and then, uh, and then she'll be back probably the next meeting with, with her recommendations. Okay. Great. Good, we done? I think we are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody, yeah, yeah. Um, somebody make a motion to adjourn? Yeah, it's Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're done. Are you recycling? Yeah. Like I'll a lawyer going through that? I don't